Hi, I'm Oak Felder. I'm a record producer. I've been able to produce records for people like Brandy and Kelly Clarkson and a number of other folks. And I also love film. So I'm looking at scenes from movies that depict recording situations and shows. And I'm looking to see if they got it right. So this one is going to be from Daisy Jones and the Six. This is episode three of Daisy Jones and the Six from the season. We can make a good thing I'm just a general. Ooh, that brings back memories. Look, oh Lord, look at that. So for people who don't know, the uninitiated, uh, we record all digitally now. People record on their phones digitally, record on computers digitally. Those big machines behind this guy that's sitting at the console, those large tape machines are where we recorded all this stuff way back in the day. Uh, and the only reason I know about that is because I grew up in a recording studio when I was a kid. My uncle was a record producer. So he made me learn how to use, <laughs> how to use these things, man. Goodness gracious. Yeah. For a recording studio in the 60s and 70s, this is exactly the gear that you would have in, in, in that space. Okay, let's do this. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more um, typical back then in the 60s and 70s to have like everybody in the room at the same time recording. Uh, so we, we have this thing called multi-track recording now that gives us the opportunity to record things one at a time. So. That's how a person can cut their lead vocal and then do all their own background. But back in the day, uh, you had to have the lead singer and the background singers and everybody sort of record all at once uh, and still do multi-track, but it was just harder to do it back then. So people would, people would record all at once, which is why you would usually have the band in the room all at the same time. Did you want to talk through the song first? Oh, or? I'm fine, unless you have something. No, I'm you fine. Wanna... Okay. So. Okay, so he, it looks like he's using an Elam. 251, which actually is the same mic that I use. Uh, it's one of my favorite microphones. I love that thing. I just got it. Oh, um, yes, you're She's using a Neumann. The right there. Okay. 87. And, yes, correct. And mic placement is dope. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Oh, wow. Okay. Hello. Hello. That's Yeah, perfect. look at that. Well, has she never recorded before? Hello. 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 She's about to. Could we turn these off or lower them a little? Yeah. There's the dance. I'm glad that they put that in there. Vibe is so important in a recording studio. I mean, you go to a studio and there's the gear and there's the booth and the separation and all that stuff, and that's important, but nothing is more important in a recording studio than vibe, right? Because without vibe, you can't really be creative. You can't really like feel the music that you're making. So if all the technical stuff is there, you'll just end up making technical garbage. The fact that she was specific about cutting down the lights is she wants to she wants to get her vibe straight. And I 100% understand that. It's why I have colored lights in this studio. And it's why there's whatever there is in my recording booth so that the artists, when they walk through the room, they can feel the vibe. You know what I mean? It's really important. I'm glad they included a little tidbit. Can we give us a level, okay, please? So they're having her record or they're having the vocalist record solo. So a lot of times that used to happen too back in the 70s particularly. And I think this is set in the late 70s. Well, you'll have the band go in and put down all the music in the instrumental track, then come out, go into the control room, and then you'll have the vocalist go in and then just sing after the fact. Better way to control the vocal. Okay, that's good. And Daisy? Baby, baby, baby. Nice. Okay, let's get this uh, started. This is Honeycomb, take one. Yes, with the tape. Like they're actually using the gear. I love that. Man. I look at that. It's moving. The faders are moving. Yeah, this is cool. I don't know who I am. What? Do we need? What? Do we need the audience? You mean the band? She's talking about. Yeah, us? yeah. I mean, a lot of times, We're especially so having that window in a recording Let's studio, go. that can Let's get just, awkward um, sometimes. Give just us watching. some space, don't you think? Having people Steph. watch you record. Debbie's working today. Oh shit! Then a lot of times you end up getting like reactions from people that are in the other room. And okay. I can mess up your performance Honeycomb, sometimes. Take two. Been plenty of times that I've kicked people out of studios. I remember I was doing a session with Chris Brown, and uh, I had to clear a room full of people. <laughs> I had to clear a room full of people so I could concentrate. Yeah. Man. Yeah, they're really kind of nailing the vibe of I don't know who I am. what it feels like to be in a studio. Baby, 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 do you know who you are? Oh, he's got a great voice, too. 
Amazing vocal. Is it out of our hands? Tell me, tell me, tell me how we made it this far. And it sounds like here's the other thing that I like about this. It sounds the way this is mixed. And what I mean by mix is the way the the way this sounds, the way the audio of this is set up. I really feel like I'm in the room listening to him record. Now, if we were being uber realistic about it, we wouldn't be hearing any music, obviously, because the music is in his headphones. But having said that, I mean, it is a show. You got to hear you got to hear what he's doing. I feel like I'm really I don't feel like I'm listening to him pantomime to a to a uh to a recording i don't feel like i i don't think he's lip sync i mean he's obviously lip syncing but it feels like he i'm actually in the room listening to his voice Did we a long time ago? and you notice this is so subtle and all of my sound nerds out there will totally understand this listen to the shift in how everything sounds from when we go from where they are in the room right there the cameras right there in the room and then we shift to the control room Listen to the change in the sound. And so now it, now it sounds like it really would sound if we were in the control room listening through a pair of speakers. That's small details like that make such a big difference. It really does. And now we're back in the room. It sounds like they're right there. And like I said, the only thing that's not realistic here is if we were in the booth or in the recording room, in the studio with them, we would not be able to hear them. There are no speakers in that room. We would not be able to hear the music. We'd be able to hear them, obviously, because they're singing right there. But we wouldn't be able to hear the music. The music only exists in their headphones. Uh oh. Stop. <laughs> wow, that was really cool. Aren't the lyrics that you're uh her version's like a completely different song, Teddy. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, there's like drama between What do you these think two. the song's about? What do I think the song is about? What the song yeah, what is I wrote? The song what about? do I think the song that I wrote is about? Drama. I gotta watch it's about this show. Starting a new life, okay. Daisy. It's about redemption. Redemption from from what? From letting people down. What's interesting about this dynamic, and this doesn't really have as much to do with or maybe it does. Uh, so many songs were born of drama. So many songs were born of fights like these. Um, literally, uh, I remember having a fight. Well, not a fight, a disagreement with my wife. And she, she inadvertently gave me the concept for Sorry Not Sorry the day that I went to go work with Demi to do that song. Uh, good concepts were born of drama. So... Yeah, and this this ha might not happen in this setting exactly this way, but this this energy is right. So guilt, it's about guilt. No, it's not about guilt. I'm it's sorry, I'm not trying to pry or anything. I'm just trying. This to might be an issue. I think that that mic, and this is me nitpicking. I could be wrong. The color of this mic is off. This is a newer microphone than would be available in the '70s. It looks like an '87 reissue, which didn't come out until 2000. So that might be an issue, but uh, I could be wrong. Stay down. Wow. Right? And now you're you're saying okay. You know, so now they're fine. they're really just look at us now. Everything's in the past. They're really just having the, having that. the whole issue. I don't believe they go but through you the wrote fight. A speech, Billy. When at the very least, I think it can be a conversation. Takes his okay. Takes his headphones off. He's done. He's finished. Bye, Billy. <laughs> I like that. I like this scene. I, I couldn't find anything that bothered me about this. Honestly, I thought it was put together very very well. It. it yeah, you know, it looked exactly like a recording situation would look. It was set in a studio that I, that I think I've been in before. All the gear was being used. Mic placement was good. Uh, that one microphone, and I'm not even sure. I could be wrong. Uh, that one microphone being the one that she was using might have been too new a mic for that era. Neumann mics didn't, didn't come that dark, I don't think, back in the 70s. Um, but aside from that, absolutely 100% well done. I, I got a nick a little off for, that, uh, for the mic but I'd give it like a 9.98. I mean, it was pretty dope.